Attention public speakers, today we're talking about why a public speaker has to be audience-centered. If you wanna have impact with your message, with your word, with your voice on stage or on screen, then you have to make sure that you are motivated by your voice. You can't keep reading off a script. You have to know your story inside and out. You have to understand why your customer, your ideal audience wants to hear or needs to hear that message. You have to understand what is relevant versus what is important. And you have to stop reading off your script and presenting the same message to every single audience you speak in front of. Instead, what I want you to do is tailor your message for each and every audience. That's what we're talking about in today's video. I'll show you why your audience matters. We'll talk about the four adjustments. And at the end of the video, we'll talk about the cutting edge of audience analytics. All this and more, stay tuned. <laughs> Your audience matters when you're presenting your public speaking or your motivational talks. You have to understand who your audience is, what it is that drives them, what is stopping them from overcoming their obstacles. What is it that you can do to ignite them to actually take an action? You have to understand your audience in order to have that type of an impact. Look for the desired response. Look for the desired outcome that your audience wants to have and do what it takes to create that desired response. So if you need to take them on an emotional journey where you're gonna tell them about stories where you were vulnerable and stories where things weren't working out for you, you wanna show them that you're relatable. We call these your relatability stories. And then you want to show them that you have climbed to the tops of mountains, that you have achieved incredible results, and that actually you can help them do that too. That is going to be an emotional journey for them to go on, to realize that they are seen in you, they see themselves in you, and then follow that through to, they've achieved, I can achieve. I can achieve with them. They can help me achieve. Then you become the, the leader. Then you become the authoritative voice that's going to help them take their message to the next level. Take them to that transformation, to whoever it is they need to transform to and become on the other side of that journey. But in order to do this, you first have to understand who your audience is and you have to be audience centered. You have to keep your eyes on your audience. This can be difficult different platforms. A lot of us are engaging in online conversations. So if we're in person, we can see our audience. We can judge the energy levels. We can pick up and hone in on people who are tuned into us and we can create bigger energy, a ripple effect in that case. There's lots of simple strategies we can employ while we are on stage in person with people. But what if we are virtual? What if we can't actually see our audience as well? Maybe we see them in little thumbnails on our Zoom screen or maybe we don't see them at all. You have to find ways to gauge that audience interaction. You have to build in to your content ways of engaging, ways of generating that response. But at the same time, just like I used to for many years working in radio where you clearly have very limited interaction and you definitely don't see your people and they can't see you. They can't see facial expressions. You have to use the power of your voice to keep people engaged, to draw people into the conversation and to make them feel like they are part of the conversation even if they're just sitting in their car listening to you on the radio. So think about ways that you can engage that audience, make them feel themselves in your story, make them feel themselves in your content. Curious, what has motivated you to become, to want to become a public speaker? What has motivated you to come watch this video? I'm super curious. Let me know down in the comments below. And if we get a couple of comments, then I'll create a video and share with you the reason why I started my speaking career as well. The way I structure my speaking gigs is that I will create overall topics, umbrella terms, if you will. These umbrella topics are where I will create presentations, the structure, the outline of the presentations that will encompass everything under that umbrella. 
I have maybe three or four of those. You might consider these your keynote addresses. What are those big topics that you can speak on? Then what you're going to do is tune in to these four adjustments. Fine tuning each and every one of these adjustments for your audience. So you can take that same umbrella topic or that same keynote and present it to audience A and present it to audience B each time fine tuning it for those specific audiences and therefore giving each of those audiences completely different presentations. They still get those same big outcomes, they still get that same topic discussed, but they get it at a different level. They get it at different adjustments that are relevant and important to the audience. Remember, we're audience-centered, right? So the first adjustment is to adapt to interests. Think about it. If you have a group of college students you're talking to, and then you have a group of board members and CEOs and C-suite executives, they're going to have very different interests. So what you're going to present to them is going to be slightly different. What you're going to use as your hooks to get their attention. What you're going to use as stories to demonstrate both the relatability factor and the fact that you are the expert, your authority story. You're going to have different ones because these two audiences are different. So adjust on the level of interest first. The second level is to adjust on the level of understanding. Again, your high, your high school students and your C-suite executives are going to have two completely different levels of understanding on a topic. So make sure that you are adjusting your umbrella topic and the information and the stories that you're presenting to be on the level of understanding. You can get really geeky and nerdy and use a ton of jargon and insider language when you're talking to people who are familiar with that, but when you're talking to a group who's at an introductory level, you're not going to want to overwhelm them with all of these terms that they might not understand. You want to create content that is on the level of their understanding to help them consume it all. You don't want them to tune out because you've thrown in some jargon. Just like showing up to a math class in university, I would just randomly show up to other people's classes um, and I stepped into this math class and I had no idea what was going on because of all of the insider jargon that they were using. That tuned me out, I fell asleep, woke up a few hours later in some other lecture. And that was much more interesting, but we'll save that for another time. If you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button. The third level that you can adjust is on attitudes and beliefs. So again, if you're presenting to a right-wing audience and a left-wing audience, that's just the first binary I could think of, you're going to present your information differently. You're going to talk to them differently. You're going to have a different, because both of those groups have different attitudes and beliefs around certain topics. Making sure that, again, you're tailoring to your audience. And the fourth way that you can adjust is on the level of delivery. Some groups will want an in-person presentation while others may want a virtual. There will be different follow-ups. Maybe you can supplement your discussion with a workbook. Maybe you can't have extra workbooks. Maybe you could have an entire video course that's separate that gives added value to those who are interested in diving even deeper. It depends on what your audience is looking for and what the host of that group or what the host of that audience is willing um, to, to allow you to do. So there's lots of different options to do that. If you want supplementary information on building up your movement, becoming the authoritative leader and all of that fun stuff, then hit the subscribe button. I already mentioned it. Join us here on the channel. <laughs> now the cutting edge of audience analytics is here and it's literally at our fingertips. When I used to work in radio and TV, we would, we would pay millions and millions and millions of dollars to have this at our fingertips, but it didn't even exist. It wasn't invented yet. And now we have it at, on our cell phones. We have it on our laptops. We have it with us wherever we go. And the way that we can tap into that is to create our live stream show. Having live engagement with our people, whether they're synchronous or asynchronous, whether they're there live on the stream or they're watching it later on. But the point that you're recording it live, you're getting that authentic level of, of personality coming out of you. You get that engagement with your people who are live. You get that feeling like you're there with a real person, like you're hanging out with your friend rather than just listening to 
some random guy on the internet, right? That's the difference. So when you set up your live stream show, you have an ability to, we call them um, connection machines. You're able to connect with these qualified leads, these potential customers or audience members, and we're able to bring them into our world and nurture them while they're there because we're consistently serving them messages. Messages that are on brand, messages of hope, messages that help coach them through a process, messages that keep them relatable to us, messages that show that we have climbed mountains, as we say, that we are the authority figure. There are so many benefits to having a live stream show that we can't get into here, but, but check around in the channel. There are tons of examples of videos that talk about the power of live streaming. But what I want you guys to do is, if you're already creating videos, either you're pre-recording them or you're just popping on your phone live to say hi every once in a while. I want you to head over to the link below, uh, join us for the live stream analysis. So use that workbook, go through, look at the content you're already creating, and give it a score. We give you this wonderful framework. It's our Stream 360 framework and we break it down so that you can use it in your content. So you figure out what your score is and then if you wanna boost that score by a lot, then join us for Live Academy and we'll show you how to implement that framework into your business. And it's pretty, pretty powerful once you do. So join us for that. Uh, links are all down below. And for those of you who aren't yet ready, you're still working on tuning into your message, then I invite you to go live. Go live on a regular basis, um, share your message with your people, get, get familiar with what it is you wanna talk about, where your level of expertise is, where your people are, what problems can you help them solve, and then come back, do your live stream analysis, and join us for Live Academy. Mm. And in the meantime, check out one of these videos. And say it with me, my friends, remember, I love you, be excellent to each other, and just go live. <laughs> <laughs>